Hello. Today I'd like to highlight a discussion I had with Dr. Natalie Cabral, who is an astrobiologist who has worked on the topic of life on Mars as well as SETI throughout her career. In 2024, she had an interview with The Guardian online and they asked her, where in our solar system would you most expect to find life bubbling up? She answers, I believe that Mars still has some big surprises for us. They won't be at the surface, but unlike many people, I don't think it's going to be that far below. So for those of you who don't know, NASA actually answered this question in 1976. And we're gonna to get to the bottom of that here today. NASA in 1976 had a couple of missions to Mars known as the Viking 1 and Viking 2 missions to Mars. Each one had an orbiter that went around the planet and then a lander that went down to the planet and just did some experiments. Uh, and each one of these landers had three life detection experiments. One was known as the gas exchange experiment, another was known as the pyrolytic release experiment, and lastly one called the labeled release experiment. And for the purposes of this discussion, we'll be focusing our attention on this last one. The labeled release experiment was something that was developed by Dr. Gil Levin and Patricia Ann Stratt. Each one of these life detection experiments produced results consistent with autotrophic microbial respiration. Now, what does that mean? Meaning to say all three of them produced a result indicating that there's life on Mars right now, okay? Uh, the labeled release experiment produced a positive result for microbial metabolism, okay? At two different landing sites on the planet. Now, this experiment was designed by Dr. Gil Levin. He was working as a sanitation engineer and needed something to figure out whether or not there was any pathogens in the water or any microbes in the soil. So he developed this little gizmo, and how it works is you just take up a little sample of the soil, let's say, feed it some nutrients, and see if it produces any gas. Uh, the gas is indicative of metabolizing. So NASA understood the value of this test, and they recruited Dr. Gillivan to adapt this experiment with the help of Dr. Patricia Ann Stratt for the Viking lander mission. They wanted to get to the bottom of whether or not there's any microbial life on Mars. And so Dr. Gillivin arguably had the best test in the early 70s to figure this question out. He ran this over 4,000 times here on Earth, and it never produced a false positive nor false negative. And in my book, that's a perfect test. So one would have a high degree of confidence knowing that if you sent that to Mars, and it came back positive, well, that's an indication that it detected microbial life. And they agreed that if it came back positive, that that meant there was life on Mars. And guess what? It came back positive at two different landing sites on opposite sides of the planet. Now, why didn't they break out the champagne and say, hey, we detected life on Mars? Well, the problem is, is that there was this other test called the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. And this other test was not a life detection test, but it was an organics test. It was designed to look for the organic material in the soil. And guess what? It didn't find any. So what does that mean? Well, if there's no organic material in the soil, but the life test says there's life in it, well, how do you have life without any organic material? It didn't make any sense. So NASA at the time said, ah, the, the test results were inconclusive. The life detection tests were inconclusive or ambiguous. And then later they just refined that to say, well, there's no evidence of microbial life on Mars. The problem is that many years later, we started sending these little cute rovers there to Mars and the Curiosity rover found the organic material in the soil. So the question then becomes, well, did NASA go back and revisit these results from 1976? And the answer is no. So you, you have the organic material in the soil, you have the positive life test result, but we're not relitigating this question. And in the wake of that inconclusive determination back in the 70s by NASA, there have been generations of astrobiologists who have clung tightly to that conclusion. 
that there's inconclusive data relating to this issue of microbial life on Mars. And since then, there have been many published papers showing how a chemical process could be responsible for producing that positive life test result. I think Dr. Cabral is one of these astrobiologists because otherwise she would have mentioned this labeled release life test experiment. Um, but regardless, I reached out to her on LinkedIn to confirm this and I said, surely you must be familiar with NASA's Viking labeled release experiment. You know, the one that found active microbial metabolism on the surface of Mars in 1976. And she responded, no, they did not. They saw a highly reactive soil, which does not need the presence of microbes. Perchlorates identified on Mars may explain that reaction. The baseline is that we did not know the physiochemical environment of Mars in the 70s, so it was not possible to unambiguously conclude the results of the analysis. They have been reproduced since in the lab without microbes. Now, let's examine what she's saying here, okay? What she's saying is that this thing called perchlorates identified on Mars may explain that reaction. What the heck is a perchlorate? Perchlorate is a naturally occurring oxidizing chemical compound made up of one chlorine atom and four oxygen atoms. It can occur naturally or be man-made and is primarily used here on Earth as an industrial chemical in rocket propellant, explosives, fireworks, and road flares. Um, it's an oxidizing chemical compound. What does oxidizing mean? Oxidizing meaning the transfer of electrons between reactants. Well, again, what the heck does that mean? Think of it this way. Fire, okay, when you have the combustion of organic materials where oxygen oxidizes carbon. Or rusting, the oxidation of iron and steel in the presence of water and oxygen. Or perhaps even the browning of fruit, the oxidation of organic compounds, okay? Her argument being that perchlorates on Mars, which they did discover on Mars, perchlorates on Mars mixed with this nutrient solution from the labeled release experiment produced this positive life test result. Meaning, in other words, a chemical process produced this life test result. She goes on to say, they have been reproduced since in lab without microbes. Meaning, in other words, guys in lab coats got perchlorates, got the Viking nutrient solution, mixed them together, and produced that same life test result. Case closed, we've answered this question, it was a chemical process that produced this result. The problem with that argument is that perchlorate does not react with any of the nutrients in the labeled release experiment to produce a positive result at Mars temperatures. And this is the critical part here. Anyone who is claiming perchlorates were responsible for the positive life test result are incorrect. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. Who we really need to defer to is Dr. Stephen Benner, who is an award-winning biochemist who has published hundreds of research papers in the fields of chemistry and synthetic biology. And I asked Dr. Benner about this specifically, and here's what he had to say. Your response to the committee that <clears throat> the search for organics using the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer instrument did not support a non-biological interpretation right. of the labeled release results. You're basically saying they were wrong. Neither perchlorate nor chlorate can explain the Viking labeled release experiments. Wrong again. And we still do not have a solid non-biological explanation for the labeled release results. And we certainly do not have numerous explanations. Yeah, well, so the perchlorate's a wonderful case. I wish I said I could set things on fire with perchlorate and do with my Fourth of July fireworks uh, device goes off, but you know they tried to to oxychloride species to explain 
Gil Levin's result, but Gil Levin's results were not run at 400 degrees centigrade. These were at zero, low temperature, and perchlorate in Gil's food at low temperature don't do anything. They just sit there. There's a, now there's a question, and there have been experiments whether the rocks on Mars, limonite, these are iron oxides on Mars, whether if you expose them to UV light or whether if you, you put peroxides on them, will they, uh, reproduce Gil Levin's experiments. So it would be a perfectly reasonable thing to set out now and try to get the best samples that you can get from Mars and try to see if you can find some plausible explanation for Gil Levin's experiments, respiration, but not be it biological. That would be a reasonably good line of research. Now, we don't have a lot of samples of Mars. Well, of course, we don't have any samples of Mars from the Utopia and Chrysi landing sites where Viking went. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I was quite surprised that after 40 years, okay, including our paper in 1999, but saying that the GC mass spec result did not rule out organics, but never mind the fact that there have been rovers down there since for years finding organics, it still it surprises me enormously that you could have a committee sit down and say, hey, we need this committee because of the Viking results when they committee themselves clearly does not understand the Viking results. But hey, that's culture. Culture is what you think when you're not thinking, right? It's what you do automatically. Now, for a deep dive on the Viking mission, and more specifically the life test experiments aboard the Viking mission, I would encourage you to read a book authored by Barry D. Gregorio called Mars the Living Planet. And it outlines in excruciating detail how NASA implemented these life detection experiments and their analysis afterwards. For more with Dr. Benner, you can go visit his blog at primordialscoop.org. I had the great fortune of interviewing both of these gentlemen for my YouTube channel. Please refer to these interviews if you wish to hear more from them. And as always, please watch Blue Planet Red, the documentary now streaming, where you can find even more of this story. So Dr. Natalie Cabral, while you may have had an extensive career in astrobiology on this one particular issue, arguably the most important issue of your field, you happen to be wrong. The evidence does not support your claim. Perchlorates have nothing to do with the positive result achieved by the labeled release experiment aboard the Viking lander mission in 1976. In other words, NASA found life on the surface of Mars in 1976. They did not find a chemical process that produced this result. So I look forward to continuing this conversation with you. Please reach out and let's see where it goes. Thank you.